In this lesson, I want to show you how to create a health bar above a player. Now I've created a very simple scene here. I'm going to go ahead and play this so you can see what we've got so far. So I've got a player here, response to gravity. We've got left and right movement. We've got jump. And what I want to happen is when I hit this spike over here, I want a health bar above here to keep reducing every time we hit that spike. Now that spike could be an enemy, could be when we fall, etc. Let's have a look at how we can do that. So in my player here, what I want to have is a child node and the child node needs to be a progress bar. So search for progress bar and we'll create that. I'm just going to make sure that in my player, I don't have grouping turned on because my progress bar, I'll zoom in a little bit. I just want to be able to move that. So I'll just move that up to about here and I'll increase the size. Now it's showing 0% on my health bar and that comes from this value over here. So the value I can change to 100. Now I've got 100%. Now the black, the styling of this is not particularly great so I can change that down here. I've got theme overrides, click on that. And then we've got styles. You can see we've got the foreground style here which is currently empty. I'll click on that and select new style box flat. You can see the color is changed already. I'm going to click on that background color and change it to something else, maybe like a green color. There we've got green. Okay, let's see what we've got so far. So we've got the player. You can see that the progress or health bar follows the player wherever the player moves, which is what I want. Now obviously when I hit this spike or an enemy or when I fall, whatever I set, I want to reduce this health bar. Let's see how we can do that. Well, in the spike, I've actually set this spike to be an area 2D, which gives me access over here in my nodes to these signals. And one of the signals is body entered. So if I double click on that, I can send a signal to my player script. And the method's going to be called on spike body entered. That's okay, so we'll connect. And then we've done here, we can see we've got this function on spike body entered. So when a body enters the spike, what do I want to do? Well, the first thing is I want to test if it's the actual player who has entered the spike. So if the body, so the thing that has entered the spike, so if this body dot name is equal to well, what's the name of my player? Well, the player is called player. So if the body name is player, I'm going to do something. So I can get rid of this pass here. I don't need that. And just indent. Well, what I want to do is to reduce the progress bar, bar value by a certain amount. I'm going to reduce it by 10. So I'm going to target the progress bar. So progress bar dot value, that's the thing we set to 100 earlier. So progress bar dot value, I want to subtract 10. Okay, let's see what happens. Click on play. I've got my player. I'm going to hit the spike. And every time I hit the spike, the health bar reduces by 10. Now that we have the health bar working, what you could do is put in a conditional test. So if the health reaches zero, you could reduce the number of lives by one, or maybe you restart the game. Now I'll leave that up to you to explore. In the meantime, if you found this video useful, remember to just give me a quick thumbs up. And if you would like to be notified when I release a new video, then hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell.